In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Heraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good and master of life, come dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. And of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We're going to look now at a different rhythm as than usual on the alternate possibilities for uh, All Souls Day. There are, uh, in effect, about 27 possibilities. Um, so I've decided to take them in an overview uh, rather than give a protracted explanation of each text. There is a very fine book that, if you don't know about, uh, you could get. This is, a, this is a second edition now of this. This is the first edition. Uh, you know, it's it's called Eschatology, Death and Life e and Eternal Life. It's by Johann Auer, A-U-E-R, and Joseph Ratzinger, and it's from CUA Press, Catholic University America Press. Uh, very fascinating, and also it's a great meditation. We don't think about death very often, even our own, and we should. So, uh, I've already done the readings for the feast day, and there are, as I just said, um, these texts. Huh? There's 13 for the second reading, there's 12 for the uh, gospel, and there's two for the uh, alternate reading. So we're going to look first at the first one of these, uh, which is Wisdom 7, 4 rather. Wisdom chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. All of these texts are written by the Holy Spirit to instruct us about the mystery of bodily life here and hereafter. First one uh, is Wisdom 4, uh, 7 to 15. Uh, but the righteous one, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding passes for gray hair, and an unsullied life is the attainment of old age. He's trying to point out that it's the quality of life, not the length. Um, all of these people knew that there was something more than death. But until our Lord himself rose from the dead, it wasn't crystallized, it wasn't clear, as we just see in this text here, you see. Snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind, or deceit beguile his soul. For the richer, the, this translation, the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world of desire transforms the innocent mind. Another translation of the Vulgate has fascinatio nugacitatis obscura ponum. The fascination with trifles obscures the good, which I think is better and a little bit closer, uh, I think, uh, to this text here. Um, so, um, the, 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 the point is, as they strove for this understanding, they realized that union with God was something that uh, somehow transcended death. And that's this first reading. Um, to understand the power of their experience of God and their experience of God's care for them, that they could not rest with the notion that you just go nobly to the grave and you're finished. Because... They had a personal relationship to God. If we have that, then when we preach to people, they'll understand what we mean by immortality. We're going to look at uh, the other alternate that's given to us uh, as a first reading, if we want it. 
and it's Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. Uh, on the mountain. Now, this is a prophecy text about how God is going to care for his people in the future. But the future in the text is sort of left open. Is it this life or the next? In a way, it's mostly this life, but the text applies to much more than that, as we'll see. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of the gospel of this people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Indeed, this is our God. We looked to him and he saved us. This is the Lord to whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. Now, you can see here that there's an intermingling of, of a, a rescue or a salvation here in this life, but it prefigures something much more definitive that's going to happen. And that's why it says here, you see, um, destroy the veil, the web, wipe away all changes, and he will remove, finally it says, you know, death. Uh, and so, destroy the veil that veils all people. This is a promise that death is not the last word. Now, until Jesus rose from the dead, there was no way to give a, a clear concept of what it meant to live forever. For me to live forever means to live with my body, otherwise it's not all me. Uh, my spirit escapes to some place, but that's not me. And so this alternate reading is the same theme as the other one, you see. Um, he's going to provide a feast of rich food. He will destroy the veil that veils all people, the web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. He will destroy death forever. Death is separation from life, and God is life. And therefore, to be separated from death and to be plunged into life is to be plunged into God. Now this is Isaiah 25, uh, perhaps a later text, but not you know, tremendously late. Uh, it's in the first part of Isaiah. This promise. God gave the Jewish people this sense that they, that is, they as they are, body persons, would live forever. God would see to it. Whether it would be just the Jews or just those who are righteous and so forth, it was a long battle because death is real. And when you're living in a culture with no hospitals and so, you know, you get really sick, you're going to die. And if you die, you disappear from this world. And here's a promise, he will destroy death forever. How will he do that? He will rise from the dead in his own humanity and then join all those, most especially those who have joined themselves to him through the Eucharist and their bodies have been nourished by his risen body. And as Irenaeus says, it is impossible for a body into which the Eucharist has come to remain corrupt unless that person turns from God. But if he, if he dies united to God, he has the seed of physical immortality within him, namely the Eucharist. And that is the fulfillment of this text of Isaiah 25, 6-9. This promise, people knew God and they knew that he would not destroy forever.